it's too dangerous. From driving off of a cliff, to speed flying, and fighting on a moving train, Tom Cruise proves that no mission is impossible for him in Dead Reckoning. Tom's performed the biggest stunt in Hollywood history for this film. And Wade Eastwood, the action director and stunt coordinator for the Mission Impossible franchise, spoke to us about how he made it happen. Let's look at how these incredible stunts were pulled off. Welcome to Explained. Tom Cruise can do it all. Cliff fights, jumping across rooftops, flying helicopters, you name it. His stunt work takes his films to another level. And he's become so good at aerial stunts, he'd rather be on the outside of an airplane than in it. Okay, jokes aside, Tom Cruise is as good as any professional stuntman, and the skills he's developed over the years have helped him push the boundaries with the stunts he does in Dead Reckoning. Let's look at the first stunt in this film, the car chase in Rome. This wasn't an ordinary car chase, and Tom did the driving himself. To make the chase look authentic, they factored in the heavy traffic that Rome is known for and the slippery cobblestone streets. But Tom's already a precision driver, so they handcuffed him to his co-star and made him drift with one hand. His stunt driving training for Rogue Nation and Fallout came in handy here. This is when he learned to drift fast on a circuit and it had to be perfect. Because in the real chase, he had to drift very close to the crew on narrow streets. And even drift down a flight of stairs. The chase in Dead Reckoning also involved the tiny Fiat, and this little car was modified to make the chase even wilder. We souped it up and did some really cool modifications to it, and in the end it had just over 500 horsepower. I mean, it was, it was ruthless. It was an absolute hooligan car. And uh, we had different, you know, dials and we pretty much always had it on max, but we had different dials and trying to drift that was so difficult. Very short wheelbase, was really snappy, so always wanted to turn on you and snap around on you. Next is the train fight stunt. In this scene, Tom is in a fight on a moving train that eventually goes off track and falls over a cliff. And it looks crazy. Special train carriages were built for this film. And the fight sequence was filmed on the roof while the train was traveling at almost 100 kilometers an hour. And from the looks of it, he seems pretty relaxed riding on the roof. He's gonna now pull me off the train. The second part involved filming the train falling off a bridge. This was done in the UK with a real 70-ton train. Tracks were laid and a bridge was built that ended in a huge drop into the Dalton Quarry. And at the bottom, they dug a massive pit and filled it with water to reduce the impact of the fall. They drove the train's engine off the bridge first. And next, they filmed the dangling carriage where Tom hangs on for his life. The carriage was lifted to the top of the bridge and hooked onto the edge of the rig and then dropped into the quarry as well. We don't have a shot of Tom hanging onto the carriage before it falls, but he definitely filmed it, because after climbing up the world's tallest tower for Ghost Protocol and up a rope on a flying helicopter in Fallout, this would have been simpler. We don't use CGI in our movies. It's if, if, if there's a train and Tom's hanging on it, Tom's hanging on a train. Any physicality that Tom does, like pulling himself up on the train, it's he prepares himself again. So it all goes back to that, if you're not prepared, you won't have the physicality to do it, or you'll do it once or twice and you'll pull a muscle or you'll have an injury where Tom comes so prepared, he's so strict on his training regime. It's when he comes to rehearsals, it comes to do it, he's given 100% and we can ask 100% from him. The final stunt was the motorcycle base jump. This is the biggest, most dangerous stunt in the history of cinema, and Tom put the master plan together himself. John and I are jumping out of the helicopter. He's gonna chase me. That's what we say to each other. Don't be careful, be confident, be confident. Part one involved advanced skydiving and speed flying. Tom's already an accomplished skydiver and was the first actor to do a halo jump from 25,000 feet in Fallout. But the training was different for Dead Reckoning. Tom did over 500 skydives and it took a year to get right. 
At the same time, he also had to learn speed flying, which is an incredibly dangerous sport because it involves racing down a mountain just a few feet off of the ground at a very high speed. Tom rehearsed for months and months and months to do that. Um, very committed, was already a very good skydiver, accomplished skydiver. Um, but we started a real, really stringent base jump training regime. Tom was so competent that I, there's no one else in the world I would have had to actually do the stunt. And he can also bring performance to it. He can also play Ethan. Whereas if I'm doing it, I'm just doing it as me. It was time to move on to part two of the plan, motocross. Tom's passion for bikes is well known, but motocross was a first for him. So a practice track with 70 to 80 feet long tabletops was built to help him learn. Well, I have to get so good at this that there's just no way that I miss my mark. He even practiced jumping off a ramp in a quarry. The ramp's angle was adjusted for each jump, and everything from his ground speed to the wind direction was accounted for. So they knew exactly where he'd land and where to place the aerial cameras for the right shot. The key is me hitting certain speeds and being consistent with that. There's no speedometer, so I do it by sound and feel of the bike. And then as I depart the bike, I'm using the wind that's hitting me here, and I'm cupping my chest. That will give me lift. After 13,000 motocross jumps, they headed to Norway where the real ramp was, and every tiny detail was accounted for. The exit had to be perfect. The track had to be perfect. You had to make sure that the crosswind on the ramp was great. Once that was perfect and you could ride the bike successfully, the bike had to be in immaculate condition so that it didn't break down just before the end of the ramp and he just dribbled off the end. That would be you know, catastrophic. You had to then you know, depart from the bike and make sure he didn't get caught with the bike as it tumbled. Before the actual jump, Tom skydived a number of times from a helicopter. This let him get used to the weather conditions and know when to open his parachute to avoid crashing into the rock face. Finally, he was ready for the real thing. moment after all that rehearsal that Tom actually, I gave him the action cue and he left the ramp and the silence as he disappeared, I'll remember that moment uh, forever for sure. It was very, uh, it was very overpowering. I think I can hold to the bike a little longer. Not only did he nail it, Tom Cruise did that jump a total of six times that day. What kind of stunts do you think he'll do in Dead Reckoning Part 2? Tell us about it in the comments. Like the video and don't forget to subscribe to Explained.